I think maybe let's just start by maybe take us to the moment that you even found out that it was going to be uh, maybe not so easy to get pregnant. Maybe kind of go back to that moment yeah. and just share maybe some of the story to kind of put some context around everything. Well, it was a memorable day because it was my birthday. And so it was my 25th birthday. It was eight years ago. and 25 is yeah, a significant 25. Year. Renting cars, no insurance. Quarter life money. crisis for real. It's a big deal. And I had to be at work that morning. So it was an early appointment. I think it was 8 or 9 a.m. And... Uh, I just went in, and um, I'll never forget my doctor. She walked in, and she had done some blood tests on me because we had been trying to have kids. We had started that year trying to start a family. And she just said, don't sure your blood test results came back irregular. And she said, you don't fit the profile of what your tests are saying that you struggle with, but I am going to send you immediately to an infertility specialist because you're going to have difficulty starting a family. And I'll never forget that day. I mean, I was sitting there. I thought it was a routine doctor's appointment and just um, just thinking, what in the world? This is crazy. Like, yeah. you know, I, big family. My mom's given birth to six kids. She, my dad winked at her and she got pregnant. Like, yeah. I never, it never crossed my mind that I would have any issue uh, conceiving. And so that started the journey of a lot of tests and... Um, a lot of different seasons over the last eight years, but you remember that day. What was it? What was it like for you? I think that maybe throughout the whole process, I don't know if I ever realized like how serious it was until you know. I think the years sort of go by. Like when you found that out at twenty five, did did you know right away? Like, wow, this is going to be an eight year journey, no. or did you kind of go, oh, okay, that's that's tough news, but it's going to it's going to be okay. What, what, what would you maybe say is, was your, I think I kind of felt like I could fix it. Yeah. I waited a whole year before I told mom and dad, before I shared, you know, with the people that were closest with me, you were the only person that I talked to about it because I just thought, I don't even want to worry anybody. I don't want this to be an issue. And really, to be honest, I didn't want it to be a label on my life. I didn't want to be identified with infertility. It made me feel uncomfortable. And so I just thought, I'll try to figure this out on my own. I'm sure by the time, you know, next year wheels around, I'm going to be pregnant or close to it. And then, you know, I turned 26 and was still in the same place and had had a lot of failed attempts and just wondering what to do. And I think a year in is when I started to share with the people closest to us. Well, and I think one of the things that makes maybe the journey difficult for so many people, especially I think a lot of the questions that have come in that people ask you a lot and just even when we get to sit with other couples that have maybe gone through this is that for so many it's such a private pain that they feel like um, I've heard all sorts of things you know women saying that they feel like they're not you know a complete woman because they're unable to have kids or maybe shame um, for so many it's a private thing that they kind of keep to themselves for you I remember the first few years you being very very private about it but at some point, you sort of kind of decided, chose to say, I'm not going to stay quiet anymore about it. I'm going to go public with it. I'm going to talk about it. Maybe wh- wh- where'd that moment come from? Well, it was a process of becoming comfortable with what we were facing and accepting the circumstance, but also not identifying it as my actual identity. Yeah, I had to come to a place, and it took me years And so I think it's really important that everybody's journey and story is different. Like, we're just telling our story. For me, it took a long time for me to come to a place where I was comfortable sharing it because I was uncomfortable with the situation. And I think that it is a really private thing. You know, you're going to the doctor, you're having tests, you have this desire in your heart to start a family and there's nothing you can do about it. It's a really private pain. And when people start to ask questions, uh, you know, when you when you get engaged, people ask you when you're going to get married. When you get married, they ask you when you're going to have kids. Yep. When you have one kid, they ask you when you're going to have another kid. It's just it's just casual conversation. It's harmless, but when you're in a place of pain, even those harmless mm. um, questions can be shots to the heart, and you don't know how to answer and you don't know what to say. And so it was a journey for me, and I think for every person, it's not something that you never pressed me to share it. And I'm so grateful for that. Like, you were never like, you need to share it with everyone. You let the Holy Spirit comfort me and speak to me and affirm my identity. And the Holy Spirit's so patient, and you were so patient. And 
it took years for me to get to a place where I was comfortable sharing it with several friends and then more friends and then then to a place where in church I could actually be honest even in ministry moments about our journey. Oh, I think, I mean, just a common probably difference between you and me at times is that I think that you, generally speaking, are a private person. Yeah. Does it really, and then I'm sort of a little <laughs> it's bit more. It's true. I don't know um, how that is. I came from such a big family, but yeah. But I think, yeah, I think naturally you're kind of more, yeah, reserved, private, and that maybe at times I can be a little bit more like, hey, just sharing it all. For and sure. so I think that there was a bit of a, a slight tension in the sense that I remember just having a feeling of going, wow, if we're going through this, mm-hmm. we ought to get everybody we know on board praying with us, agreeing with us. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of under the notion, people would ask the question all the time, when do you have kids? And once we did go public with it, my, my responses became going, yeah, you know, we're practicing every day. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever God I wants remember. to do is work. We're doing our part, you know. Yeah. I would kind of just make a joke out of it, but also at the same time be honest with where we were. But that's not everybody's, once again, that's not what everyone else has to do. That's maybe how I'm dealing with it. You're dealing with it. But I remember being so proud of you when you did decide to share your story. And I think for so many, the reason why the miracle matters so much more to many people is because they didn't just get to witness the miracle. They got to witness the pain. They got to witness the valley of it all. They got to witness the trial of it all. Yeah. It's like, you know, what's a triumph without a trial? Exactly. What's a victory without a real challenge? What's what's a win? What's a story without a struggle? It's true. And I think many times... People, they don't get to celebrate the victories of others because they don't really understand people's struggle. And I think when you decided to go public, you decided to share your pain, share your wound. When God did bring a miracle, I feel like so many people were able to celebrate with you because they were with you back then in the pain. Yeah, well, God did a real work, I feel like, in my heart as far as securing my identity in those private times. You know, of going, this isn't who you are. Like, you can have the freedom to share it publicly. You can share it with your community at church. People can ask you questions. They can say things. Um, But your identity is rooted in being a child of God. You know, and I think as women, I talk to a lot of women who feel like they're, their womanhood is at question, you know, that they are less than, that there's a piece of their identity missing because they're unable to Mm. start a family. And it's so real because I felt that way. But the truth is, is that infertility is not um, excluded from what Jesus paid for on the cross. If Jesus paid once and for all for us to be whole, for us Mm. to be complete in His love, then why do we act like infertility isn't covered by that? That's great. Our identity is secure in Christ. I had to come to a realization of that, a real, honest realization that, no, like I'm not known by what I can do or my ability to start a family or um, my health or even what we achieve or any of that. Like my, My identity is I'm a child of God. I'm secure. I'm loved. And I think also coming to a place of understanding, uh, a lot of people, a lot of women have opened up to me, and I'm so grateful for their vulnerability who are in ministry, and they go, what if I do share? It just makes me feel so uncomfortable. And I think I had to come to a place of going, uh, it's not about me anymore. Mm. God's done enough for me in my life. He He has healed my heart even before the miracles come to pass. He's secured my identity. He's been patient with me. Now it's time to be honest so that other people who are in a hopeless, desperate situation can know, hey, you're not in it alone. Like, I I haven't held the baby, and I haven't seen the miracle come to pass, but God's faithful. Yeah. He's he's faithful. He's been faithful to us. Well, I think one of the big decisions that we decided to make as a couple was saying that with or without a baby, we're going to walk in joy. We're going to walk in peace. And if God doesn't have a baby for our future, well, then he's got something better for our future. And I think that's, I think there's something about that of going, babies don't complete me. Husbands and wives don't complete me. Promotions don't complete me. My favorite job doesn't complete me. My dream doesn't complete me. Jesus is the thing that completes me. And I think more so than me, you were tested in that, in this space, um, I think that as a couples go through this together, so for sure I think that there's guys that are watching right now that have feeling pain or not knowing the right words to say. And I just think that 
as a man in the home, you just got to get in it and lead with it and walk with your wife through that thing and cover her and put value on her. And for me, I don't know, I, and everyone's story, once again, it's different, but I yeah. never had a feeling of going, man, I'm, I'm less than a man or we're not a full um, family. I did always have a, a, a calm confidence that it was gonna come about. There were some moments, I think, where it's going, what if this doesn't happen? And that's where I think you and I had this decision in our heart that we're saying, if, even if it doesn't happen, we're gonna, we're gonna be the best two parent, best two people we could possibly can be. We're gonna love our church. We're gonna love our friends. We're gonna love our community. We're gonna take advantage of all the things we can do. Not having kids, yeah. you know what I mean? I just think putting your full weight down and going, the blessing's not the baby. The blessing is is Jesus. 